Hello, everyone. I'm Sandro de Gregorio again from Colegio Santiago Apostol uh, Cabanal um, School in Valencia. And now we are going to deal with um, the zone of proximal development. In the previous video, we introduced uh, the theory of social learning by Lev Vygotsky and the learning technique called interactive groups. Now we are going to stand strictly from the pedagogical perspective how this theory and technique work. This is the zone of proximal development. You can see there are three circles. The outer circles is the things I cannot do, uh, even with help, even aided. The middle cir circle is the circle where I can, uh, uh, I might reach my objective with the help of a more knowledgeable other, who can be um, a teacher, a parent, an adult, a friend, or more interestingly, from, from the project perspective, a peer. The center of it is the things I already know and I already master. This, uh, um, this scheme uh, leads us also to the concept of scaffolding. When, uh, um, when a learner is in their zone of proximal development, an expert will provide appropriate assistance to, this, uh, to the learner to help him accomplish a new skill or task. According to scaffolding theory, resources, tools, instructions, and activities that are used to support the learning process are referred to as scaffolding, which refers to the structure provided by other learners while learning a skill. You have an explanatory video about the scaffolding and the zone of proximal development here, which I strongly suggest that you see. Uh, but let's deal here with the picture itself to explain. We use scaffolding to pass from the center of the circle to the second circle through the, the help of an adult. How does that work? In order to illustrate this example, let me use uh, some sports examples, which are far more direct and easy to understand. The first one is swimming. If you, as an adult, if you took a baby and left him in the sea, and try to teach him how to swim, he wouldn't be able, even with, with your help. At that time, at that moment, at that age, it's just out of his limits, out of his uh, area of things that he might understand. On the contrary, if we take um, a pupil, primary, primary students, and we try to teach him to swim, uh, he will struggle, but eventually he will manage at least to float and sweep in a certain way. That, of course, depends on the child and the trainer, but theoretically it's possible. So at that time we are expanding the zone of proximal development of the boy or girl, and uh, through guidance we uh, created the conditions for him to swim somehow. If we work with an adult and you ask him to swim, he will, he will tell you, I already know how to swim. He will just enter the sea and swim. So he's in, inside of the circle in this case, the inner part of the circle. He already masters that. The same happens with uh, basketball. Basketball shooting is a complex uh, action, physical action, that requires uh, not only strength, but also a high level of coordination. Uh, as you can see, as you probably already know, uh, the movement is more or less something like this, uh, uses the whole body. Now, if you've seen somehow um, people um, who have never played basketball before, uh, giving it a go in a playground, you will immediately recognize the ones who have never um, played basketball in a team. Um, you see that basically uh, the ball has not enough arch, probably uh, no spin at all. But if a more capable um, adult, trainer, or peer teaches them, shows them which is the right technique uh, to shoot the ball, you will see immediately that the arch is higher, that the spin is the correct one. Uh, spin is essential in basketball shooting. The same happens with uh, tennis and the drive, which is this way of hitting the ball. I don't know if you ever played tennis in your life. I did, I tried. Uh, at the beginning, you hit the ball plain this way, and the ball goes far away from the tennis court, of course. So um, someone taught me that I might use the spin, again, which is basically consists in rotating your arm in order to give the spin that ensures 
that the ball goes down after going up and stay, which is the most important part, on the tennis court. Um, that part is absolutely essential. And you might learn it eventually on your own, but it will take like plenty of time. And instead, with the help of a more knowledgeable other, we could get it um, in basically uh, no time. It's kind of the same day, probably. Mm -hmm. So I use these sports examples because they're very straightforward and give you the direct idea of what is the zone of proximal development. But here we're talking about education at school. So let's use zone, the zone of proximal development to illustrate how to teach fractions. In order to do that, we will use Venn diagrams. This is the first Venn diagram. Each diagram represents a person. This is me, me being primary uh, pupil who has never heard about fractions before. I don't even know the word. This is part of my universe, so family, for example. And here there are other things that belong to my universe, like sports, friends, um, having a tour around, and of course the connection within each group of knowledge and among the groups themselves. This is the more knowledgeable other, a parent, a friend, teacher, or a peer at school, a schoolmate, which is the most uh, interesting case for us. Now the Venn diagrams, as you know, the middle part is the one that uh, we share, the part that I share, the knowledge I share with my more knowledgeable other. In this case, it's a thunder, um, cloud, the moon, and lava. But my more knowledgeable other, he knows about stars, and I don't. So the star, as you can see, is on the right Venn diagram. And it doesn't belong to my knowledge, it only belongs to his. So the shaded area here is my zone of proximal development. I can know what a star is, I just need a bit of help. Let's apply this to fractions, the mathematical concept of fractions. So on the left you have me, the primary pupil, I don't know anything about it. On the right you have the teacher. And the blue area is what we know, uh, we both know. Of course what's interesting about education is getting to know what you don't. So we, I have somehow to stretch my Venn diagram towards the light blue shaded area, which is what my teacher knows. In this case, fractions. You can see now what I should, how I should stretch my uh, knowledge in order to get to my zone of proximal development, which is indicated in a yellow area in this case. So on the right, my teacher knows about fractions. That's the concept, half a square. I don't, I don't have anything like that. Nonetheless, both the teacher and I, we know what a bottle is. I know what a bottle is. And I know what is a liquid that fills the bottle. If at some point the teacher asks me to fill the bottle upon reaching a certain level, and he says, this is half. Now we're talking the same language. I know what is a bottle filled of water up to a certain point. I didn't know that this was a half, but now I know because we are connecting. We are talking about things that we both know. So this was the explanation about the zone of proximal development strictly from the pedagogical perspective. Let's see in the next video how we can implement the, this zone, the ZPD, uh, in the project, in Ecofink's project, what we did to use this tool for the purpose of the project, which was Internet of Things and Domotics. See you in the next video.